Hello, and welcome to this NeuroMatch Academy lecture on reduced neuron models. My name is Richard Node. I'm running a computational neuroscience lab at the University of Ottawa. What I want to do today is describe a mathematical neuron model for how neurons are generating action potentials. What I'm not going to do is describe everything, the complex machinery that neurons have for doing just that. Instead, what I want to do is describe the simplest picture that I can come up with that remains fairly accurate. And what I'm going to show you is that there is a picture, there is a set of equations that is surprisingly accurate in uh, reproducing the activity of neurons. So here we go. Neurons have axons. These axons are the wires that send the action potentials. Um, there's a cell body which roughly is summing currents from dendrites and synapses and making this decision of generating of an action potential. There are dendrites, which are receiving inputs from synapses, and there's the synapses that are the connections with other neurons. So when an input comes from other neuron, it first goes through synapses and then dendrites and then goes to the cell body where the decision of making an action potential is being made. Now today, I'm not going to talk about the first two stages of this, the synapses, the dendrites. I'm going to focus on the cell body. So I'm going to treat the question of how is an action potential being generated given the current flowing into the cell body from the dendrites and the synapses. And this way, I'm going to focus really on the excitability on how and what is making the action potential. So if we zoom on a patch of membrane, we have a current that is possibly time dependent that impinges on that lipid bilayer. And this will influence the membrane potential, that is the difference in electrical potential between inside and outside of the cell. Now we can understand the relationship between the current and the membrane potential by considering the biophysics of the membrane as an electrical circuit. The lipid bilayer acts as a capacitance because charges can accumulate on either sides of the membrane. It also acts as a conductance because charges are conceived as flowing through the membrane. It's a conductance that is coupled with a battery um, because this flowing through the membrane will depend on the relative concentration of ions inside and outside of the cell. And then there's the ion channels. Ion channels are these proteins sitting on the lipid bilayer that can allow ions to flow through. But this allowing ions to flow through is regulated by the shape of the protein such that we conceive those ion channels as conductances that are variable and that are coupled also to a battery and the conductance actually depends on the membrane potential itself. So if we go to the physics of these, um, these devices and we describe the current flowing through, we will uh, apply Kirchhoff's equation, which is that when a current comes at one node, it can it will have to go through either one of the different branches that comes out of that node. So um, that means that the current that impinges on the membrane will either go to charge the capacitor or leak through the membrane. Um, and you see here I've used GL for the conductance, the leak conductance of the membrane, EL for the equilibrium potential or um, leak potential of the membrane, and C for the capacitance of the membrane. Um, and then there's the current flowing through the different ion channels. Now, these different ion channels come in different types. I have here uh, written the sodium ion channel and A, the potassium ion channel, K. Both of these are generating the action potential. And there are also a bunch of other ion channels that are not involved in generating the action potentials. So the approach of the leaky integrated fire here 
is to first ignore those ion channels that are not involved in generating the action potential, but we'll come back to those later, and to replace the generation of an action potential, the machinery involved in doing that, by the phenomenology of this, that is, a threshold. Once we reach a certain threshold uh, voltage, these ion channels, particularly the sodium ion channel, is being activated and triggers the action potential, which, after the action potential is done, resets the membrane potential, and uh, the dynamics continue to unfold. So we're going to replace those two currents by an external threshold followed by a reset. And this is the leaky integrated fire model. Here are the equations of the model. We have a first order differential equation for the membrane potential V as a function of a time dependent input current I. And we have a threshold condition. The threshold condition is such that whenever the membrane potential reaches the threshold, we will stop the dynamics and re restart the dynamics only a time delta later. This delta is the absolute refractory period, and it corresponds to the time it takes for an action potential to be generated, roughly one or two milliseconds. And we then reset the membrane potential to, say, the equilibrium potential. Could be something else, but equilibrium potential is easy. And then we follow the same uh, first order differential equation. So how does that look like? Well, consider a step increase in current at some time t0. Uh, that, and the current stays constant for that time after that and will then be released. And we consider a current that is weak enough such that we will not reach the action potential threshold. Then the membrane potential will look like this. It remains to the equilibrium potential when current is zero, and when the current steps arrive, the membrane potential increases because the current is charging the capacitor. But as the membrane potential is increasing, there's more and more current flowing through the leak. And at some point, the current flowing through the leak compensate for the current flowing through from dendrites and synapses, and we reach a steady state. There's no more change in membrane potential, as you see here. And once the current is released, then we need to come back to the equilibrium potential, and we follow the same curve, but in reverse. This curve can be calculated by solving the ordinary differential equation, and we get uh, an exponential relaxation to a steady state that is written here. Um, and this exponential relaxation will follow a time course that is characterized by the membrane time constant, which is just the ratio of the capacitance and the leak. And this is typically between 10 and 50 milliseconds in real neurons. Now, let us increase the step such that the membrane potential is indeed reaching the threshold. In that case, we will follow the uh, reset condition and the threshold condition such that we stop the dynamics. Well, we say we're making a spikes. And after a time delta, we restart the dynamics at the equilibrium potential. And then, since the current remains high, we keep on increasing the membrane potential until we reach again the threshold, we spike, and start again. The time between successive spikes is called the interspike interval, and one over that time is just the firing frequency, the firing frequency of that cell. And for a constant current, the interspike interval will remain constant. It will change only as the input current is changing. Now, is this realistic? Is this what neurons are really doing? So the main assumption here is that we've assumed that action potentials are always of the same shape. They don't have a variable time course. So during my PhD, I've done that simple check uh, myself just to be sure that this was a good assumption. And using recordings that my colleagues had recorded from real neurons, 
I simply superposed a hundred of action potentials. Uh, no matter what was the, uh, the interspike interval, the current that came in to generate the action potential, the, the action potential shape, the membrane potential in black when superposed was always looking pretty precisely the same. And you can see here, this was the spiking threshold where the membrane potential is high enough that we are sure that an action potential will be generated. And then we see here that invariably, no matter what happened, uh, the cell always came back to the same voltage, the same membrane potential. And that's our voltage reset. Now, there are a few exceptions. Some cell types do not have those stereotypical action potentials and the action potential does tend to lengthen and and become weaker when you're in a burst a high frequent a set of spikes coming at high frequency but generally it is a fairly good assumption this concludes the first part of this lecture on reduced neural models i'd like to summarize what i've said so far in saying that integrated and fire models are a useful approximation of complex dynamics of real neurons. And in the next exercise, you'll get to explore these dynamics with various types of inputs. I've assembled a list of textbooks and papers for people who want to know more. Some of these are about the generalized integrating fire model, which is the topic of bonus material.